Hello and welcome to the final part of this video tutorial. If you've watched the previous parts and you know that we've uh, sculpted up a creature bust in Super Sculpey, added details for a base and then we've made a mould. So in this final part we're going to be casting up some copies from the mould and painting them up. Now one thing that hadn't occurred to me when I was making the mould was there's actually quite a thin part of this sculpture, um, just a little stem there between the base and the actual sculpture itself. So what I've decided to do is put a piece of uh, copper piping in there just to create a bit more uh, structural strength there so that the sculpture isn't likely to snap. And as you can see that's just going to sit in the mould like that with a, with a bar through the centre just so it doesn't slip down. So I'm just bolting the mould together here uh, and as you can see I've clamped a piece of wood upright on the bench here uh, that's just so I've got something that I can attach the mould to so it doesn't fall over while I'm pouring the resin in. So what I'm going to be doing here is mixing up some, as you can see, some multi-purpose resin there. What I'm going to be doing is tinting it in two different colours. So the actual bat sculpture is going to be tinted uh, with white pigment. Because of the colour of the resin it will come out sort of slightly off-white. So that will give me a nice base colour for when I come to paint the sculpture. And then for the second part, the, um, the actual base of the sculptures, I'm going to use resin that's tinted black. And that's just that's going to be stone coloured, so that also gives me a nice base to paint against. So I'm just mixing up my resin here, and um, as you can see, that's gone quite a nice sort of a milky shade of white there. Um, so I'm just injecting my catalyst and giving it a good stir, and then pouring it into the mould. And as you can see here, what I'm doing is rotating the mould, and the idea of this is to try and free up any air that's been trapped in the mould as I've poured the resin in. I'm giving it a good shake, moving it about a lot, that's just to make sure the resin can flow over the interior of the mould and any air that's in there can escape. Right, so there's the mould half filled there now, um, and while the resin's wet I'm going to put my uh, piece of copper pipe in there, and um, that's just I won't be able to put it in once it's dry, so now's the time. So just mixing up my black tinted resin here and pouring that in. And as you can see I'm doing the same thing, I'm rotating the mould and I'm just using a spatula to try and push the resin into the details of the mould so I don't get any air bubbles. Right, so I've left that for an hour or two and you can see the mould's dry and it's gone quite hard. Um, it always surprises me how much heat actually comes off the resin uh, when it's dried. Um, it's uh, what they call an exothermic reaction, so it gives off heat, but the amount it gives off is quite surprising really. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not too hot to touch, but it's, um, it's definitely quite hot. So right, just breaking the mould open here and uh, hoping for the best. Right, so it's looking pretty good initially. Um, I can't see too many obvious air bubbles. Um, and as you can see actually, there's a degree of shrinkage in the resin. Now this is something that's, that's inherent to resin. It tends to shrink um, a tiny amount. That actually sort of helps because it means that the resin isn't stuck into the, um, into the silicon. There's a little bit of a gap and that just lets you get it out of the mold pretty easily. Right, so there's my cast, and um, what you can see on the sides here is what's called flashing. So, um, as you can see from the tips of the, of the shoulders, is where we cut air channels into the mould in the previous video. That was just so the air could easily escape from the tips of the ears, and I wouldn't get air bubbles at the ends as the resin poured in. The rest of it around the edges is just where resin's worked its way between the two halves of the mould, uh, and as you can see it's pretty thin so it's quite easy to snap off. So it obviously um, needs a bit of clearing up before we can start doing anything on this. And in time on a tradition, here's one I made earlier. Now the one on the right is actually my first attempt and um, as you can see um, I misjudged the amount of resin that I needed for the first half of the mould so I think you can see maybe his torso finishes slightly too, um, too early. So I'll be needing to add something in there to fill in that gap. But as you can also see I've got some air bubbles in the face here, so on the outer eyebrow and um, on the nose and lips. Now on the first pour I didn't rotate the mould or bang it or anything like that to try and free up the air. Um, on the second attempt, and as you saw, I did though. Uh, and as you can see here, although there is a tiny little air bubble in the um, eyebrow and another one in the eye and a few others here and there, um, the amount of air bubbles is much less than on the first cast. So I think rotating the mould, banging it has, has really helped. Uh, nevertheless, we've still got some air bubbles in both casts, so a little bit of work is going to be needed before I can get around to painting these. So what I'm doing is taking some 
um, fixotropic paste. All this is really is just a thick resin, so you can't pour it. It's intended for like uh, pasting onto um, surfaces. And what I'm doing is just mixing this up, putting the same white um, pigment in, and I'm going to use this to fill in the uh, gaps in the sculpture. So as you can see, I'm just putting some on the um, into the gap there, and then uh, pushing it into the hole uh, with a paintbrush. Right, so there's my cast with the air bubbles filled in. There is a little bit of a line around the edges of the mould where the two halves meet, so there's been a little bit of sanding required just to hide some of those lines. But overall, this hasn't been too bad to clear up, so I'm quite pleased with that. So now that that's all done, I'm now ready to go on to actually painting the model. So what I'm doing here is just giving it a spray undercoat primer and so what I'm doing is spraying the base grey and I'm going to spray the top white. So now I have a cast ready for painting and um, as you can see I've actually had a bit of a practice on my first, uh, first cast that I did. This one has slightly more air bubbles in it than this one so I thought this would be a good practice piece. So what I wanted to do here was simply to try and come up with a colour scheme and a method of painting this. Um, hopefully and come up with something that looks quite nice. So what I've done is to um, just paint this using oil paints and as with the previous video of mine what I've done here is just to use very thin washes of thin down oil paints to slowly build up a paint scheme here. So all I've tried to do is give it some sort of variation in colour so you can see the sort of red in the ears here and around the nose and eyes um, and I've just tried to sort of slowly build up layers of colour um, to try and give this um, a, hopefully a realistic look as you can see there's a bit of red around the uh, I don't know what they are the wing sort of areas here and we come around to the back you can see there's also some blues and I even put some yellows and greens in there as well um, to try and give it a sort of a slightly more realistic look there so the way I began this was taking my cast and what I've done here is to give it two um, coats of a uh, base coat so the bottom coat is a grey primer and that's going to be stone so that's fine so I'm happy with that colour. The top I've painted in um, a, a, a white acrylic spray um, and what I've done here is I've just given it a bit of a light coat so I've not tried to completely cover it so there's a degree of variation in tone uh, between the uh, front of the head and the cheek and things like that so that's just to try and give it a bit of variation so it doesn't look like all one, uh, one complete colour because skin isn't one colour it's a multitude of colours as we'll see. Now it's important that the base coats are both acrylic. The reason being is I'm going to be thinning down the oil paints with the thinner and if I'd used um, something like an enamel spray the thinner would eat into the paint and I'd get the, and the colours would start mixing up. Instead what I want is for the white base to remain untouched and not interact with the colours I put on it. So I'm going to be using white spirit to thin down my oil paints. Now I've had a few questions on previous videos about what this actually is uh, because I know it's called different things in different countries. Um, so it's called white spirit in the UK and you can just buy it from hardware stores. It's used for thinning down paint and cleaning brushes. I know it's called mineral spirits in the US. Um, what it's called in other countries though, I, I'm afraid I don't know. Um, but any, any paint thinner should really do the trick if you're using oil paints and I'm sure art shops will have something that will do exactly the same thing. So as you can see it really is just very very thin thin hints of colour uh, and the idea here is just to keep building up these uh, layers until you get something that looks convincing. Um, so the first layer is red here, I mean obviously you get a lot of red in things like the ears, and there's a lot of blood vessels, uh, same as areas of the face. Um, and I'm just sort of going along and adding very very thin layers of colour here um, to try and accentuate those areas. I'm just going to continue to add a variety of different colours here, I'm trying to splodge them on randomly and then use the brush to sort of um, disperse them and uh, make them not uh, fairly subtle rather than being uh, big obvious blobs of colour. Um, yellow seems to work quite well, it's sort of kind of approximate skin colour. Now blue doesn't necessarily seem an obvious colour to add to skin but if you think about it veins and bruises can look quite blue um, when when you can see them so um, I actually, I'm actually surprised at how much blue I ended up adding to this I mean, obviously you can't put it on in large blobs but a small sort of subtle layer of it really does seem to add a certain something.
So I'm just going in again now and adding another layer of red. Um, I think I'm sort of I'm getting in the right area, but it still doesn't quite look alive to me. Maybe it looks a little bit too pale. Um, it's sort of slightly misleading in that it actually looks slightly different to the eye than it does to the camera. Um, so it's sort of trying to get a, a balance between the two. So what I'm doing now is going in with a um, dark brown, it's called Burnt Umber. Um, now on the other the previous version I painted, I think I might have gone a little bit too strong with this colour uh, because he looks like he's been sunbathing for about 10 hours. Um, so maybe a little bit too dark, so I'm trying to hold back on it slightly, but I find that adding um, a adding some fine lines of this into the recesses of the model can really help create a bit of definition. Right, so there we go, so it's sort of approaching what the other model looked like. Um, as I said, I think I went a little bit too strong on the uh, on the browns on the previous version. It Again, it does look different to the eye than it does to the camera, so I think it actually looks quite good on camera there, but to the eye it does look a little bit too dark to me, so I've tried to hold back slightly. So what I'm going to do now is start looking at the eyes. So obviously he's got a bit of a blank stare at the moment. And what I'm going to do here is give it a, a coat of white acrylic um, for the same reason that I use acrylic on the base. So once I've got a, a dry white eye, I can then add some further oils on top of that to add a degree of shading to it. I think it might be quite fun to do some versions with pure black eyes or different sort of coloured eyes but for the time being I'm just going with the standard eye design so I've got my white base now I'm just painting in a red iris um, and then finally just putting a uh, single uh, blob for a pupil in there as well. Um, as I mentioned because this is acrylic paint I can now go over it with some further oils just to give a, a degree of shading to it. So turning attention to the base, this is actually much easier than doing the main sculpture. And what I'm doing here is just taking some dark colours, generally go for some browns and greens and just sort of working these into the details of the sculpture, um, thinning them down a bit, moving them around and then just wiping off the excess so that the paint gets trapped in the recesses of the, of the detail. And for the final step, what I'm doing here is just taking some thin down brown paint and I'm just flicking some small blobs over the model. And this is just going to give some little um, dots uh, of colour onto the model, um, almost like freckles I suppose. You, you don't want to do it too much, but it just helps add a degree of randomness to the colouration here. And um, you know, creatures often do have little spots and things like that. So it just helps bring more of a touch of realism to the sculpture. Right, so there we go, um, a slightly lighter version than the uh, previous one I'd done. That's deliberate because as I mentioned I think I went a little bit too far with the uh, Burnt Umber on the previous cast. As I said it does look alright on camera but um, to the eye it is perhaps a little bit too dark maybe but who knows, I mean I guess different members of this species will have different colourations so I guess that's fine. But anyway it's good to have a bit of variety so this version is a little lighter. And that's it really, um, if you've watched this far, thanks for sticking with it. And now this isn't a commercial channel, but I guess I probably should mention if anyone's interested in getting a copy of this sculpture, it will be available in my Etsy store, so um, check out a link in the description if you're interested in getting one for yourself. I think it would be quite fun to do some more versions with perhaps different uh, markings, you know, with like sort of um, interesting dots and dashes and things like that as a part of their skin pigmentation. So I'll probably do some further versions in the future and uh, maybe use some masking techniques to try and do some interesting patterns on the skin uh, but for the time being I'll leave it there so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time well thanks very much for watching uh, I'll be posting more videos on this project and others so please do subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on uh, you can also find out more on my website, which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com, uh, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, just search for The Dark Power.